community, and I loved being part of a team that would pick the stories that we would tell. And, and I loved that as I grew as a journalist, I would be able to help frame whose voices we raise and how we told those stories. And I began to really understand the importance of perspective and that where you were coming from would often frame exactly how you would see an issue. And I would figuring out that some of those voices that were unheard deserved to be raised up and they were critical in telling the story of our nation. And I also learned that not everybody would appreciate that and sometimes there would be a lot of pushback on some of the stories we wanted to tell. Not everybody wants to know and understand somebody else's perspective. And whether we got it right or we got it wrong or if more likely our stories and our journeys are a combination of some stuff we got right and a lot of mistakes that we made and a bunch of lucky breaks and opportunities that were taken and chances that were blown we have to share our experiences authentically for others. We need to think of the urgency of now, as has been said, um, to deal with the things that we care about, whether it's career steps or, or bigger issues that affect women. There will always be someone there trying to talk you out of what you're doing. Plow on anyway. That philosophy truly gave me the grounding for the places where I worked at NBC for 16 years and NBC stations and then 10 years at CNN. My documentaries about black in America or Latino in America or gay in America or women in America often met with resistance because people weren't interested in hearing a perspective. And I understand those are big stories and challenging stories to tell. To me, I think it's always a fight and I don't think it's a, a business where you can be comfortable, the newsroom. I think you have to be willing to ask uncomfortable questions and push in uncomfortable ways. And I don't mind. I, I like to call it as I see it. News is a challenging industry for women, despite the fact that women are in the majority in every single journalism school. We very rarely are making the top editorial decisions. Women of my age are very usually replaced in the anchor chair by someone who's 10 to 15 years younger and really pretty. That is just the nature of the beast. I had a boss who once told me how he picked his female talent. I was pretty young then, and I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit, but this is basically what he said. He said, this is how I pick the women I'm gonna have anchor. I watch them on TV, I turn the sound down so I can't hear what they're saying, and then I Think about the critical question. Would I want to sleep with them? Yeah, and that was at the beginning of my career. And I stayed in anyway. Ultimately, it is about having a choice. I spend a lot of time with my scholars, getting them not to look at next year or the year after, but the 10-year mark. What do you want to be? What impact do you want to have? It's, it's not about a gig. It's about a contribution to the world. And what does that look like? And I think we need to think of our opportunities in the same way, the long view. What do we want to be working on 10 years from now? What do we want to be remembered for if we were to drop dead tomorrow? What I tell my scholars is that their experiences, even the terrible ones, are making them stronger. And that applies to us too. A safe and easy life and path through life is not going to get you where you want to be. You have to be tested and then rise to that challenge and fall and rise and fall to get to where you want to be. And risky career decisions, frankly, are never about your career. They're always about the kind of life you want to lead and the kind of impact you want to have. And when you look at it through that lens, they're really not risky career decisions. To me, the best message is to step out of the space that you're in and, and revel in the discomfort. Dig into those feelings. Ask yourself, why am I afraid? Why am I uncomfortable? And how can you use that fear to grow? We have so much to accomplish, and we can change lives, starting, frankly, with our own. This conference is a blessing because it's an opportunity to Use your voice and leverage your voice and figure out how to get on your path and lead others to theirs. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.